So that's the core idea, right? We want to make sure that our teams are reviewing outstanding bugs regularly and are promptly fixing the most critical bugs. But how do we ensure that we're working on the most impactful bug at the given moment without spending a ton of time investigating every single bug up front to determine that impact? And how do we ensure that we're working and collaborating efficiently within our teams in this bug triaging context? In this section, we're going to dig into several bug snag features that help to answer those questions and solve those problems. When you're triaging a bug, a crucial question to be asking is, what is the impact of this bug, right? Now, by default, Bugsnag gives you insight into several dimensions of a bug's impact and effect that can help you make the determination of the bug's impact. But even with all this out-of-the-box functionality that Bugsnag gives you, there are likely concepts that are going to be unique to your business domain or the way your team builds and delivers software that you could add to your Bugsnag crash reports to give you more upfront information about each bug's impact without having to spend as much time investigating each bug to figure out what's going on with it. Some of you will be familiar with the concept of adding custom metadata to your crash reports in Bugsnag. For those of you who aren't, this is definitely something you're going to want to look into. So regardless of which, what kind of code base you're monitoring with Bugsnag, whether it's a mobile app, whether it's something server side and anything in between, for each crash, you can add custom metadata to each crash report that contains useful information to you. So for example, in these screenshots here, some examples, you could see on the user tab, that last data point subscription level with a value team, that's not something that Bugsnag records or tracks out of the box. That's something that this hypothetical customer here has added to their Bugsnag crash reports because presumably for this customer, the plan or the subscription that a user is on helps them to determine the impact of a given bug. Similarly, in the next image below, you see this custom experiments tab that another theoretical customer uh, has added to their crash reports. The active experiments here maps to an A-B testing style of software delivery, where for each crash, they're including the various uh, testing cohorts that the particular affected user was in, which would also allow them to determine impact. So. The takeaway here is to think about how this relates to your business and your domain. So food for thought, are there concepts unique to your business's domain that would help you determine a given bug's impact? This is something to think about as we continue and to discuss with your teams. Similarly, are there concepts unique to the way you deliver software that could also help you determine impact? Maybe you use A-B testing, maybe you use feature flags, maybe you have opt-in beta programs for your users. The answers to these previous questions are going to vary a lot from team to team and certainly from company to company. What's important is that you give it some thought and you find ways to represent this information as crash metadata as much as you can, because the more this information is tagged on events as custom metadata, the easier it's going to be and the, the faster it's going to be for your team to quantify bug impact when they're looking at a bug in Bugsnag and trying to figure out how impactful, how meaningful it is to the business. So some examples, quick review here, this could be adding AB test cohort information as crash metadata, feature flag information, other metadata that relates to the uh, user subscription tier or the integration depth of the particular user, end user who was affected by the bug. So again, try to nail down what these concepts are in your business or team domain and try to get that information reflected in custom metadata. It's gonna allow for more efficient and precise error triage in Bugsnag. Okay, the next tip is consider using Bugsnag's shared bookmarks feature. Now, if you aren't familiar with shared bookmarks, Basically what this allows you to do is to save a certain set of search criteria inside Bugsnag, including sort criteria for the results, and to make it very easy to come back to that search later. What's great also is that you can share these with members of your team. So in the screenshot here, you can see the multiple users icon next to all of these bookmarks, uh, and that represents the fact that these are shared within the team. So anyone on this project has access to these saved searches. So 
when is it useful in the context of triaging to bring bookmarks into the picture? Well, one case where this is helpful is if you work in a context where your team is only responsible for a subset of the overall set of for review errors. So an example of this might be you work in a monolithic code base, but your team is only responsible for a subset of the code base. You could create a shared bookmark within your team that limits the set of four review errors to only those four review errors that affected your part of the code. So you'd go into the, you'd go into the inbox, you'd search for those errors affecting your team's part of the code base, you'd create a bookmark, you'd share it with the team, then you can encourage your team to set that bookmark as their default inbox view, meaning that whenever someone from your team goes to Bugsnag, they'll see that refined set of four review errors so that you're all on the same page with regards to which errors you should be triaging down on a daily basis. And it'll mean that your team isn't distracted by errors that are in the purview of other teams within your company. Next, let's talk about snoozing errors in a little bit more depth. So when you are triaging an error and you determine that it's relatively low impact, it's not something that you're going to fix immediately or take action on immediately. The key question that you should be asking is, what would need to change about this error's impact for us to prioritize a fix? Now, most likely the answer to this question is going to involve a number of additional occurrences of the bug, or maybe an increase in the frequency per unit time of the bug, or even a set period of time after which you don't expect the bug to be an issue anymore. In all of these cases, you can use snooze rules to represent those criteria. And the error will only then return to the for review state if those snooze criteria are met at some point in the future. A really nice feature in Bugsnag is our first class integrations with many, many issue tracking services. So whether you use Jira or one of 32 other services that we have integrations for, it couldn't be easier to create an issue in your issue tracker from inside of Bugsnag. So as is shown in the screenshot here from an error details page, you just have to click this create issue button and it will automatically create a corresponding issue in your issue tracker with all the contextual information necessary from the bug itself. And there will also be a two-way data sync between the issue tracker and Bugsnag so that workflow actions inside Bugsnag will be recorded in the issue tracker and vice versa. Now, when should you create an issue in your issue tracker? We recommend the following. If an immediate fix is necessary, in other words, if you triage a bug and you say, we have to do something about this now, an engineer needs to spend some time doing something to make this right, then an issue should be created to track that intent to do work. Also, if a fix is necessary, but it's not so urgent that you're going to stop work to get it done, but maybe you're going to bring it into the current sprint and change the plan accordingly, or you're definitely going to try to do it in the next sprint. In both of those cases, it's a great opportunity to create an issue in your issue tracker. Now, one thing to look out for is to try to avoid the situation where for every error that comes into Bugsnag, you immediately create an issue tracker ticket for it right away, no matter what the priority of that bug is. And the reason for this is that what can happen is you can end up having bugs that get ticketed, but a great deal of time elapses before they're actually looked at to get fixed. So issue trackers are really good for building prioritized backlogs, but they're not great for tracking lower priority bugs and the reason for this is that a lower priority bug can become a very impactful bug in a matter of seconds. So tracking this kind of real-time bug impact data is the bread and butter of Bugsnag. But if you have that error living in your issue tracking software, that kind of reactive changing context information could easily be lost. So what we suggest doing instead of creating issues for every single bug that comes in is only creating issues like we talked about for those bugs that are going to be worked on immediately or in the very near future, roughly in the next sprint. For anything that doesn't meet those criteria, for any bug that's lower priority and isn't going to be worked on immediately, 
we suggest snoozing it. Based on the snooze criteria that you set, you can then re-triage it once it becomes more impactful. And once it is more impactful, then you can create an issue tracker ticket and get it into your team's work plan. So because it is so important to avoid long-term issue tracker tickets, one thing we recommend and we have a lot of success with ourselves is to incorporate bug snag into your planning meeting. So if you work in sprints, as part of your sprint planning process, open up bug snag, look at it as a team, and filter down to bugs that have issues created. Now, what you want to make sure is that every bug that matches these search criteria, in other words, every bug that has an issue created in bug snag, is either being worked on currently, a fix is in process, or a fix is going to be worked on very shortly. And as part of this sprint planning created issue check-in, what you can then do if any issues don't meet those criteria, in other words, if something is sort of dragging and it's not currently being worked on, it's unlikely to be worked on in the near future, you can remove it from the issue tracker and you can snooze it appropriately in bug snag with the peace of mind that it's gonna come back into your for review state if it ever becomes impactful enough for your team to look at it. So the last feature I wanna call out here is commenting. Now, commenting is pretty straightforward, but it's also really valuable. So whenever possible, we recommend adding a comment that captures as much of the following as possible. First of all, what is the impact of this bug, right? You've triaged the bug, you've investigated it, you've looked into it. So what is the effect on your end users or on systems that depend on your system? Similarly, have you had any insights about the ROI of fixing this particular bug, right? How much effort is it going to take relative to the impact currently? If you're snoozing the bug, it's really valuable to talk about why you've chosen a particular snooze criterion versus another, right? Why did you choose to snooze this until it happens in one week versus say, if it happens 20 more times? And continuing from that, what do you suggest is done if those snooze criteria are ever met in the future? Uh, if this happens in a week's time, what should someone on your team do at that point? Additionally, if you do some investigation and you develop a early hypothesis about why this bug may be happening, that's definitely worth putting down in a comment because it may be some time before you come back to this bug and investigate further, or it may be another member of your team who picks this up where you left off. So in both cases, you're gonna be saving someone some time in the future. You can also consider mentioning someone on your team who may be able to add more context or you know, may have a good hypothesis of their own for what may have caused this bug or what might be an appropriate next course of action. Comments are really, really valuable. We recommend using them as much as you can.